All right, good afternoon. I uh, appreciate y'all coming, and I hope we don't take up too much of your Friday afternoon time. This has been an incredible ordeal for, uh, for Deshaun. I, uh, we, we toyed with the idea of having him here today, uh, so I indicated to some people he might be, and we made a decision just a little while ago that it really wouldn't add anything to because of, I wasn't going to allow him to answer any questions. And I think most of you all understand that. You've got investigations going on, and uh, not just police departments have been asked to look at it, but the NFL, uh, there may be other agencies that look at it. And my malpractice insurance wouldn't handle me allowing him to talk right now, okay? So if that was the case, then why else have him just sitting here listening to us talk about him? And, but that is what we're going to do in about this case. I want to start out with you, and then I'm going to ask some of the people that have been working on the case uh, with me um, to offer, offer some observations. Like, but I think why they're really relevant is you folks have heard a bunch of read, a bunch of um, a bunch of petitions. You have read some salacious allegations. You've seen at least two conferences, uh, press conferences by Mr. Busby. You've seen, I think we counted 40. Uh, Facebook posts, 20-something Instagram posts, and so on. A couple of press conferences. And we've been noticeably quiet. Before I start uh, with some observations and ask others, just so you know who's up here, let me so I'll, I'll start right here with Leticia Quinones. Leticia is a member of our firm while also having her own firm. She's of counsel to our firm because we do a lot of cases together and as a member of our firm. She also has her own separate firm. Um, and uh, we have, over the last two to three years, not only become very close friends, but involved in a lot of cases together. And now you'll see she is, is listed as another council member of our firm. Rachel Lewis uh, is uh, from L.A. Uh, and by way of, of University of Virginia Law School, UC, I mean, University uh, of Virginia undergraduate, UCLA Law School, a couple of clerkships, and has rapidly become uh, in very short time, an incredibly uh, big asset to our firm. Laura Hollingsworth is a partner in the firm, uh, has been with me and us for 19 years now. Her husband used to be a partner in the firm, now has his own practice, uh, has uh, been intimately involved in this case with us from the beginning, and is a tremendous lawyer. Started out as of counsel when she was having three children and then came to, back to full time as a partner. And then, if we look here to my right, my second is Leah Graham. Leah Graham has been uh, is a six, eight, maybe into the ninth year lawyer, uh, has been very, very involved in this case from the very beginning. And I, I want to go through those introductions because I'm obviously surrounded by four women. I wanted to make sure that you did not believe that we went out and hired women to be part of this case because of the type of it. These uh, actually, uh, we were trying to do the count. Our firm now is majority women. Uh, the partnerships until we had one just leave and move to Canada were half and half women and men. And and these lawyers, these friends, these uh, uh, very independent people who make their own judgments, have been involved in this from the beginning, uh, as we assessed to Sean in his case. And so when I get through with my comments, I'm going to ask them uh, to make some observations if they have them. Uh, I don't know what any of them are going to say, but they have very strong feelings about not just what's going on, but about what the kind of person Deshaun Watson is and what, and what we've done to try to figure out uh, what we believe happened without some type of blanket condemnation of the people that have sued us. But let me start out about you folks, the media. I don't think there's any secret in Houston um, that I've probably, of the people I know and live, probably been the most pro most strongest advocate of what y'all do that I know. Many of you have heard me say in other forums, in my lifetime professionally, first time I was probably ever quoted in 77, and I want the audience to know this because I, I don't join in the cynicism about the media. Even when we get criticism, even when we don't want to answer the questions you, you want to ask, even when we get upset with an article or broadcast. Fact is, I've been doing this as far as 
publicly being asked questions by the media since 1977. I'm not happy about that figure because you can do the math after that. And since 1977, to this day as I stand here, I have never been misquoted, not by a single member of the media. I have been quoted saying some things I wished I hadn't said, but I said them, okay? And I didn't say they were off the record. I've never had anybody violate the off the record rule. Um, so I stand before you as somebody who's not criticizing the media historically and not criticizing now. Y'all have done your job. You have not been unfair to us. And the reason you, you haven't been a it has gone so badly for us in the media is because we have not been comfortable talking to you. So y'all have done, I and mean, everybody in this room or anybody that's on the Zoom call all knows that everybody in the media that I'm aware of actively and aggressively sought to get our side. And we refused. So I've been accused many times in the past of, of jumping in front of cameras too quickly or whatever. Uh, and some of you are not used to the fact that we just were not talking to you. And the reason is we don't know what happened for sure. And, and you've heard me talk all along here about how in the world are we supposed to respond when we don't know the names of the people. And I've seen some talking heads uh, that say, well, I can find out who did it, right? I mean, they just go look and they match up dates and try to figure out. That's not what it's supposed to be about. We're not supposed to have to guess who is accusing us of doing something wrong. And I have been, and you've seen our pleadings, I have been guided throughout this by a strong fear. What if we disagreed with a woman and her petition and it turned out we were wrong about who it was? You and everybody else would wrongly, would rightly scour us for that. So we have been involved in something that I'm not sure y'all recognize how unique it is. And, it, and it, 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 what's really important is to understand the dangers of what's happened these last two weeks. Not just the dangers to Deshaun Watson, but the dangers to anyone in which an opponent decides to try to ruin because it will help their case. Because if you stop and think about it, let's assume for a moment that given the, the rapidity of social media, that someone decides that it's to their advantage, whether it gives them bad you know, litigation, whether it gives them advantage in anything else, to go out and just lambast the target of their ire and lambast somebody that the media and the public care about that has a reputation so that they will get the coverage they want. Let's assume for a moment, now I'm not naming names or suggesting anything, but let's assume for a moment someone decides it is to his or her advantage to be a proponent of a particular social issue or a particular hot button issue and they pick a target to try to become associated with that activity and they give all these self-serving social media posts about how wonderful they are and how the champion they are of this or that and then they make these horribly salacious allegations anonymously they file a petition but the other side's answer date is not until the first Monday, 20 days after their first lawsuit's filed against them. In the meantime, the object of it doesn't know who it was. Who, who's, how, how do I know? How do I prepare? What do I do? And then people who are sympathetic to the social issue being raised say, well, you, what, what's the big deal? You can find out. What we heard today in the courts so far, and other judges still remove, uh, to, to rule and I don't want to anticipate what they're going to say, but so far, uniformly, in 13 of the cases filed against him, two different judges have said, you need to tell them. Tell them who you are. And uh, actually, Mr. Busby, as you may know this morning, uh, halfway through the hearing, said that he was ready to, uh, to amend as soon as he got all of all his people. That is something he could have done two weeks ago. And all of this howling about us, who is it? We could have filed answers before now. We could have fully investigated. And every t while we were investigating, our biggest fear was being wrong about somebody. So somebody might say, well, my God, look at all those lawsuits. Does that mean he saw that many people? Folks, this guy had been getting two to three massages a week. The math I do on that is anywhere from 120 to 140 to 150 massages a year. He's been here since 1918. In the year 2020, all of a sudden, spas shut down. 
if you all remember, nobody was getting massages unless they came up with an ad hoc way to do it. So that partly, that, that doesn't mean exclusively. He'd gone on Instagram for four to line up, and he did. But I've learned, but the, the fact is, the world massage world during the pandemic changed. If you look at these allegations, my calculation is every one of them occur after we shut down for the pandemic. I was in a trial, so I'm pretty mindful of when everything shut down, and everything shut down the middle of March. First one of these allegations is late March of last year. That doesn't mean that he was never using Instagram before. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that if you are a busy, active athlete, and you are traveling constantly as he was, then you are going to have immediate, when you want to get one, you can't predict it ahead of time. And by the way, these, these football teams don't have this battery of, of masseuses. I think that's probably something when you all look into it and start talking, you'll find out it's not the case. These, all these players, they use different masseuses. Which is another thing that I had to learn because of the generational aspect. Millennials live on Instagram. Those of you who are millennials know that. Those of you who are not have probably discovered it long before I. They do business on it. Deshaun lives on Instagram. He does business transactions on Instagram. Other people do. I'm discovering a much more prevalent use of it than I had any idea. I'm not on Instagram. I don't do Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. I am an idiot about modern communications. But what I've learned is everybody else is not. And so there are all kinds of things that one, if you first look at and get people had questions about that I have found are totally normal. Now, now once we find out who the names are, once we find out we no longer have to worry about whether or not we're, we're guessing right about the right person, we'll examine these allegations just like anybody else. And just like I hope y'all will. I trust and hope that once y'all find out who the people are, you will do the same type of investigation of these cases that, uh, that you've done of us. So I, I wanted to make sure in my comments that you understood that I am not blaming the messenger that sits in this room or on the TVs. But I do want you to stop and think about the logical implications of what has happened here if it continues. Think about this. Social media, when I started out representing people of some prominence, the whole goal was try to get back and get a response right away. If you go back decades to the Bill Clinton days and all, they had their rapid response team, and their goal was just to have an answer by that night. Okay? But back then, everything wasn't posted as soon as it happened. You didn't have all these immediate media sources. Now, when you make the allegation, it's out there right away. And if we're unable to give you an informed answer, it stays, and it stays, and it stays. And that's been one of the frustrations and problems here. So in a public sense, Deshaun has been absent of the defense by his attorneys. I, uh, I've been through this a few times. I've had lawyers suggest I ought to turn in my uh, bar card, that I didn't know what I was doing, what I was, it was horrible. But part of the criticism was based on the same thing now. Our firm does not intend to come out and talk to y'all or the public or anybody else before we have a, a comfort level about what really happened. And I am not about to, to accuse 22 women we have now of ill motive, of lying, or anything. All I know is we're supposed to start out with you assuming we did not do it and then wait to prove shows that we did before you make up your mind. That presumption is pretty much gone in the way social media and all is used now. Because once the allegation is there, we know what, you can't take it away. Deshaun is not for one moment arguing about what this has cost him money-wise and all. Y'all have talked about, I mean, you've seen about uh, some of the endorsements being withdrawn or suspended because companies understandably don't know whether they want to be associated with him. We're not, we're not even addressing that. People can make money back up if they lose money. What they can't get back is their reputation. And that is, that is the most destructive thing about what's happened here, where we can't informally and responsibly respond yet, and yet we have been hammered time after time. And 
This is also born of my call, our lack of response to you. It's born of my caution to find out what happened. So one of the reasons I asked some of the lawyers to work on this case that have worked on it to come over to the press conference. First of all, this is the team with the exception of a couple of the men lawyers in the firm. We, as I said before, are predominantly women now. We're probably, we're probably nine or 16 or, or 10 and six, uh, you know, somewhere around there. We're a predominantly woman firm, but we do have men working on these cases too. I don't want to say otherwise. But this has been sort of the core team along with, uh, with a, uh, our investigator uh, and with uh, another senior uh, lawyer in the firm, um, John McVeigh, who is off on something else now. But when this happened, I get a call to represent Deshaun Link on the night of the 16th after the first case is filed. Didn't have a relationship with him, didn't know him, didn't know his age or anybody. He got a call on the referral. So that Sunday, I asked Leticia and Rachel, Leticia won't be too offended, two different ages, two different entirely different backgrounds of a gender that might start out believing this is true. And I know both of their politics and I know both of their attitudes and they would be instinctively pro-women in an issue that occurs. I wanted them to go down to, to where Deshaun was, I'll leave that out, and I wanted them to meet with him. And at that time, there were 14 different petitions. I think by the time they arrived uh, to talk to him, there were 16. I may be wrong, but I think it was by the 16 by that. They spent, I said, I want you all to spend two days with him, without me, without anybody else. I want you to go over as much as you can with him. And at the end of that day, I want you to tell me what you think. And they did. And they spent the time. And at the end of that time, they can speak for themselves, but both of them called back to say, we deeply, deeply do not believe this guy ever did anything non-consensual with any woman during any of this. He didn't coerce him. We don't believe he used his position. We don't use, believe he intimidated him. We simply do not. There, were there sometimes consensual encounters? Yes. And Will that come out in, a, in any kind of litigation or trial? Of course it will, and that's where it should come out. But I think it's important for y'all to know, uh, and then for instance, uh, Laura at that time wasn't involved. She gets very involved shortly thereafter. Leo was really involved from the very beginning. We've all spent a tremendous amount of time with him. And I think it's important that maybe you hear from them as to their observations and then I'll try to wrap up. I realize this is a, a Friday afternoon. This is partly me trying to apologize but explain to y'all why we have been silent. Um, Leticia, let me start out with you. Good afternoon, everyone. As Rusty stated, my name is Leticia Quinones. And I've been working in the justice system now for over 22 years. One of the things that I love about the justice system and that I am truly in love with, and that is the Constitution. Because inside of the Constitution are safeguards. Safeguards to protect individuals who are accused and also who have been treated badly. And I've noticed one thing, and I'm truly concerned about it. I hope that Deshaun Watson's case is not the case where due process goes to die. It's a quote by my friend, Mr. Weiss. I am a mother of two daughters, 26 and 18. I am a woman of 49 years of age. At the level of law that I practice, I am a minority not just because of the color of my skin, but because of my gender. And more relevant than any of those things that I've shared with you, I too am a survivor. And my co-colleagues, probably is the first time that they've ever heard that. And I put that out there publicly in front of you to let you know I have authority to speak on the topic that I'm speaking on. 
Deshaun Watson is a young man that is probably, young, well, no question, he's younger than my daughter. He's young enough to be my son. And if anybody knows me, they will tell you I'm anything but weak. I'm anything but someone who will follow something just for the sake of publicity or money. I stand on much higher values than that. And from the moment that I've spent time with this young man, I have no qualms telling you that I stand here unequivocally stating the things that he has been accused of, the things that he has been persecuted for in the public, he simply has not done. You have to take a look at if you were to purchase a vehicle, something far, far more minute than a person's character, a person's word, they're going to look at your credit history. And that's going to tell them when you go somewhere and ask them, can you have a vehicle that's worth 100000 or 50000 whether or not they should take your word for it, that you'll pay for it. You look at Deshaun's life. He's always been a football star. In high school, that was the first time they ever won the state championship. And he took Clemson to a national title. Do you think that he wasn't getting attention from young women then? I've spoken to many people who knew him all throughout his life. And every person that we've ever spoken to, none of them believe that he's guilty of these charges, them charges. None of them believe that he has the character to commit the acts that he's been charged of. His credit history should account for something. And it disappoints me that in the media, this young man who's done everything right, who grew up in a neighborhood where he would otherwise have every reason to fall short of glory, Nothing, not a speck on his record until these lawsuits. It disheartens me that some of you, some of us, will just jump on the bandwagon. And I don't discount anything that a young woman believes happened to her because as I stated before, I too am a survivor. And I can tell you this, that when I think back over what happened to me, I would not, the first person I come in contact with to get justice wouldn't be a plaintiff's lawyer. That's something we need to think about. Other things that I just want you to think about before I sit down is simply this. The first lawsuit spells out everything, in my opinion. In that lawsuit, it states that when the young woman stated that she became uncomfortable, and she voiced that to Deshaun. The massage session was stopped. He paid her what he owed her, and they left the room without incident. Not uncomfortable because of anything that he necessarily has done, but uncomfortable because of the areas that are important to him in order to be the athlete that had earned him a $160 million contract. We received an anonymous call, it wasn't anonymous, a random call from a young woman, well, she was an older woman, who knew him from long time ago. And she described herself as a red-blooded regnant. Those were her words, not ours. And she said she was also a ballet dancer. And everything that he described about the areas that he needed massage was extremely important for him to be the escape artist that he is when he's in the pocket. And so I simply leave you with this. That young man, based on his career, out of all the obstacles in his life that he's had to face, not having a father, raised by a single mother, and the depths of neighborhood where he had every opportunity to fail but didn't, and everyone who's come in contact with him that loves him and his character stood on its own, he deserves the right for you guys in the public to allow this case to play out where it should, and that's in the courtroom. And I'll leave you with this. 
I want you to think about something when you start thinking about where he was getting massages and how many massages and reaching out on Instagram. For one thing, my children, everything they do is off Instagram. It's a new day and time. If you're going to advertise your business on Instagram, why is it a problem if a customer comes to you as a result of your advertisement? When is that wrong? What is the purpose of advertising on Instagram if I can't come to you as a result of your advertisement? But remember this, and I say this, this kid is 25 years old, this young man, he's a kid to me because of his age. This 25-year-old young man was thrown in the depths of something that he wasn't accustomed to. Money, fame, and stardom. A lot of these young men have to figure out they're just not normal anymore. And on the first time that I met with Deshaun and we were sitting down across from each other, I said, son, do you realize who you are? Do you realize you're just, you can't be that same kid that you were when you were in Gainesville? It's different for you now. You have to move differently now. And he sat there perplexed and he said, you're right. You're right. I realize that, but Miss Letitia, I just want to be normal. And I said, Deshaun, you can't be normal anymore because now there, you have a target on your back. You're a superstar, you're a famous athlete, and you just got a contract for $160 million. So I simply ask you, let due process take its course. The one thing that this nation is founded on, the one thing that makes us so special than any, any other country is that we afford everyone the presumption of innocence and due process. And if it's supposed to work for some folks, it should work for all. And it darn sure should work for Deshaun Watson because he's earned it. Thank you. There, there are many reasons she and I have become such close friends. One, way, one reason is we, we both grew up in the South and the different generations. Uh, and we're both familiar with the preaching she just did. And I love it. Because that's who she is, that's the way she feels about it, but that's the judgment that she brings in trying to decide what happened to her. I want to ask Rachel if she's got any observation. And by the way, this is really kind of unfair to her. Rachel uh, may not tell you her age, but she, she shouldn't be concerned about it because she's 28, all right? But uh, Rachel, you got anything? So I met Deshaun about two or three weeks ago, and it might come as a surprise to all of you in this room. I didn't know who he was before then. I'm not from here, and I don't watch football. Um, and so all I knew about Deshaun was what I read in the allegations. So when I met him, I didn't know what to expect. And all of us are up here, like Rusty said, not because we're women or women of color, but because we believe in him. We have spent every day fighting for him since he came to our firm. And I personally have spent hours with him. And I can tell you that this man is not capable of the things that are in the allegations. He is not that man. He is not a sexual predator. And I feel very strongly to say he has not forced coerced, intimidated, or threatened any woman to do anything to him. I have watched day after day as lawsuits have come out, as the media has come out, how this has affected him. He shared with me that he has trouble sleeping and eating. It has not only affected him, it's affected everyone that's connected to him, his family. He has worked so hard for his name. And what I have found out about him is he cares deeply about this city, about his communities. He takes every every opportunity he can to give back. Spending time with him, I've realized he's humble, he's respectful, he's honestly quiet and, and mild-mannered. And just to see the way that these women and Mr. Busby have tried to tear him down, it's very upsetting to me. Like I said, I feel like he has spent his entire life trying to do the right thing, we spent a lot of time talking to him about how he was raised, his work ethic, you know, his love of God, his religion, and what that plays in his life. And I just, I would ask everyone to not rush to judgment. 
We are going to fight every day so that you all see the Deshaun that we know and that we've come to know. And, you know, I would just say that his name is something that he has not only worked hard for, no one has ever questioned his character or his reputation until this point. And we are not going to allow these women or Mr. Busby take that away from him. He is a good man. He does not deserve this. And I know that everyone will see that. They will, if you will allow the legal process to play out the way it's supposed to play out, you will see the man that we know. Thank you. Leah Graham is a, is a, a master at getting a bunch of stuff together very quickly. We've looked at uh, all the social postings of uh, Mr. Busby through all this. None of us as lawyers have ever experienced this kind of thing. Uh, this kind of dribble out two here, wait till you write that story. Then three here, wait till you write that story. Four, three, always, as I've said repeatedly, anonymously. And to what end? Um, Leah, I, I want to ask if, if you've got, you came at it after, really, I think, they got back from visiting with Deshaun. You want anything to say? Good afternoon. Along with these women, I have worked on this case from the very beginning, actually. I have had an opportunity to get to know Deshaun Watson. I have spent time with him. I have spent time with women who know him personally, who have worked with him professionally. And what I want all of you to know is that there is another side to this story, a side that has not yet been told. One um, fact that I actually found uh, very interesting about Deshaun is that he doesn't have an entourage. He doesn't have a staff. He books and schedules his own dentist appointments. Knowing that about him, does it surprise you that he would also schedule his own massage therapy sessions? Knowing that, is it odd that he would schedule these therapy sessions on the primary platform, and in some cases the exclusive platform, that these massage therapists use to market themselves? I think there is another side to this story that I am confident that we will be able to tell. I think that today's victories in helping us to identify who these accusers are will go a long way in helping us to share our story and to show you and to prove in court that Deshaun Watson is not the man that the plaintiffs want you to believe that he is. And I'm confident at the end of the day, in a court of law, we will prove that he is not guilty of the allegations being made against him. I don't want to, finally, I don't want to discriminate against Laura. So I'll ask Laura. I hadn't told her that I was asking to see if she had anything she wanted to add. Um, I can just add that I, I've, everything that these women have said, I, I fully support 100%. I've watched us all work hard and um, and spending time with Mr. Watson and, and to, to, to really understand who he is. And I, I, I deal with rules. That's kind of my thing. And uh, what I do is have the utmost faith in the process. And so I really look forward to our ability to play on an even playing field in court where we can show that Mr. Watson, as Leah said, isn't the man that the plaintiffs and Mr. Busby would like to portray. So I'm about through and would then take your questions if you have any. Um, I don't want to feel like people have to stay here longer than, as I said, your Friday afternoon does. A couple of things I want to finish with. One is, as is, is, is Leah has said, he's not guilty. Well, the irony of that statement is, this is these are civil cases, but they've been conducted like a criminal case in turn in the media. Uh, none of these women are, are suggesting that they were sexually assaulted in the sense of any type of penetration or anything. As I've read them, there are only two or three that claim there was any force used. Most of them are women who say they felt uncomfortable, didn't approve of what portions he wanted it done, you know, rubbed or so. Many of them were unfamiliar with the type of massages he was asking for. All of those are facts to be sorted out later. The problem with this firestorm that was created, it's too late probably to change people's minds. 
And that's, that's tremendously sad. But all I really wanted to do through this press conference, and all we wanted to do as we talk to these judges in public hearings now, is not to, not to extra judicially litigate the individual cases and facts, but it is simply to try to move the middle back to the middle. In the hearing today, Mr. Busby, in both hearings, he pointed out uh, the criticism these women have gotten on social media. That's wrong. Let me tell you now before we wrap up. Every single person up here has been a woman's advocate, including myself. And all four of these women have been strongly, strongly women's advocates. And in my case, as a prosecutor for over 15 years, I tried cases numerous times of sexual nature and assault on behalf of women. I mentioned to the court this morning that in the criminal justice system, I routinely tried cases in which the woman's name was not used in the indictment. That's because the law allowed that, and it was appropriate. I think when, if you go behind Letitia's comment, the point was is we wanted to encourage women to go to law enforcement, investigate these cases, and prosecute the wrongdoers. We have said from the beginning we will totally cooperate with that process, and that still hasn't changed. But it is only fair to ask, can't we just at least put that needle back in the middle? There was a labor secretary during the Nixon administration that is the source of that quote many of you have heard. When he was congratulated on being found not guilty, and he stood on the courthouse steps in New Jersey and said, now where do I go to get back my reputation? Where did I go to get back my new good name? That is going to be part of the challenge for us and something that we're incredibly dedicated to, to trying to correct. But for the public message is, please don't denigrate these women for coming forward. Don't be writing all this social media stuff criticizing them. That doesn't do anything but demean all of us. Make your decision about their complaints based on later what you find out, either through media investigating before there's a trial or before there's a court or whatever. Mr. Bu Mr. Uh, Busby has said on social media he believes in the publicity angle to try to sort out other victims and somebody that, he, that he's suing on behalf of, other victims of the bad guy that he's suing in his point of view, in his mind, and he wants to encourage the public to investigate, the media to investigate. I second that, but there's no room for attacking these women, and we have not done it, and we will not do it. We may, in individual situations, disagree with them about facts, as you've heard, but the entire process and the social fabric of our country and our society demands that a woman not be attacked for making an allegation. And we're never going to beat up on anybody before they have earned it in public at the great expense of our client, but I hope, I hope that people listening or who read this will recognize there is no place for doing that. And you need to leave these women alone. A searching examination of them and their background and whether they have a motive or anything, that's what the system always does. And that's appropriate because we do not believe the allegations. And so we'll be challenging them. But we're not going to be encouraging people to attack these women. I think at the end of the day, if we get it to where people stop and say, you know what, maybe all these things aren't true. Why don't we wait and see what else develops? Why don't we see who and what is true here? We will have made some progress. But I, I want to thank you all for being here. And by the way, I would also say to use those of you who are the haters who write all these horrible things about Deshaun, because, see, I pointed out in court this morning, there are just as many bad things being said about Deshaun or more or worse than there have been about any of the women. Haters on both sides, take a blank, blank vacation, please, and let the system work. Now, do you have any questions? for massages and then engaged in consensual sex acts with I'm some of the women? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm not asking to take the mask off. I'm apologizing for myself. I have trouble hearing through it. Do you mind saying it again, please? Um, so are you saying that on Instagram, Deshaun reached out to some of these women on Instagram booking a legitimate massage and then engaged in consensual sex acts with some of these women? No, I, I'll put it another way. I mean, you, you could get that from what I'm saying. 
that in some of these massages, there's going to be no question. We've never run from it. Our first announcement has always been about consent, that on some occasions, some acti sexual activity would have taken place. Uh, I'm not going into what it is or how, you know, the nature or the numbers or with whom, but I think you can rightfully assume that. The question always that we have always been emphasizing, never at any time under any circumstances, just as Leticia said, did this young man ever engage in anything that was not mutually desired by the other party. Have you heard from HPD or the NFL and so what have those conversations been? Sorry, do you want me to say it again? Could I'm going to repeat questions if that's okay with you all because some of you are in the back. I mean, the question was if we heard uh, from HPD about this or the NFL. We have not heard anything from HPD and I suspect uh, they're going to be incredibly careful in light of the allegations Mr. Busby made about a family connection. Um, I've, most of the time, I wouldn't expect to until they have talked to a bunch, a bunch of witnesses. I think one reason we've always, always encouraged these women to report the, these offenses, that they contend are offenses, for two reasons. I believe that's where this kind of thing always ought to start, is with law enforcement. And the second is, I think responsible law enforcement, and I believe these folks have, I haven't met them, I don't know what officers have the case, for instance, is going to want to talk to all these people because they're all potential witnesses to the nature of their conduct, sorry. So short answer after a long answer is no. I have not heard from HPD at all. I have not also heard from the NFL, but the NFL usually does the same thing. They want law enforcement, particularly when the, once the case is, talk, is reported to law enforcement, the history of these is the NFL may be privately gathering documents and information they can, but they generally try to wait until law enforcement is full of their investigation before they do something. Because that's really the only thing that's fair to both sides. So, no, I, we, we, we have not been in touch with any representatives of the NFL nor the police, but we do understand both are looking at it. Well, see, I know you haven't heard from HPD, but do you know how many criminal complaints have been filed against Deshaun? I know one was publicized, yeah. but Tony said there was two or three. So. No, Tony, Tony is our only source of information on that. I, my understanding is in his last press, press conference, he said two women had. Now, whether some others have come forward, I don't know. Now that the, so what do we have? Thir so she had 12 and one, so 13 cases. Uh, have he's been ordered to mend. He's indicated he's probably going to mend all of them now with the women's names. If I don't know whether that number has changed, but I would encourage any and all of those women who believe that they've been wrong to report it to the police. I strongly am an advocate of that. Anytime a woman thinks she has a legitimate complaint, uh, she should go to law enforcement and be encouraged. In fact, one of the things that bothered us is this idea that he didn't trust HPD, so that discourages women to do it. And I think that's wrong. And I also just wanted to clarify with you. Sure. Are, are you going to be representing Deshaun in front of uh, or with NFL investigators as well when that time comes? And do you anticipate him uh, fully cooperating with that? I will be representing Deshaun in all of this as long as he hasn't decided that I've screwed it up so badly he wants another attorney. All right? Rusty, nothing against you personally. I was hoping to ask this question today to Deshaun Watson. But um, he's 25 years old. He is accused, he he's 25 years old. Right. He's accused in 22 civil lawsuits involving sexual misconduct, lost millions of dollars in sponsorships. What does Deshaun Watson want people to know right now? He wants any vehicle he can to restore his reputation for things he feels strongly he didn't. He's not talking to y'all because of me. It's as simple as that. Uh, and that's why he ended up not showing. He was available to be here today. He was in my office. Uh, I think I saw you right before, right after we left court to say he might or may not be here because it was going to be a, a decision made at the last minute. And I finally decided, since we weren't going to allow him to answer y'all's questions, what the hell was he doing sitting up here? I mean, it was just listen to all of us talk about him. So ultimately it didn't make sense. But what he wants more than anything is to get back his reputation. You're right, the money, yes. Yeah, please. Letitia has something. Go ahead. You, you may. I was going to say, I can tell you this wholeheartedly, what he wants you to know, because we've had these conversations millions of times. He wants you to know that his mother raised a respectable young man he wants you to know that he is responsible to his communities, to the women that grew up around him, and to women he doesn't know, including the two women when he got his first check.
that he gave them a portion of it because he told someone he would, and he kept his word on that. He wants you to know that he is a man of character, a hard-working young man who has earned everything that has ever been given to him, and that he would not throw it away by disrespecting young women and assaulting them sexually because he doesn't have that to do. And so when you ask what would he want you to know, he would want you to know that his mother raised a respectable young man who would never violate a woman's conscience because it would violate his own. And he would want you to know that the full tapestry of his life is relevant in trying to decide the validity of these charges. He wants you to do exactly what Letitia said earlier. Take into consideration what he has been like until all this happened in the public mind and make that a relevant piece of evidence. He would want you to know he didn't ask those 18 women to come forward. He didn't do that, and we didn't ask most. Most of them contacted us. And we never suggested those, that, the fact that 18 women spoke so well of him, and there were many more, that that meant, therefore, he wasn't guilty of anything wrong. We meant only as you go to make up your mind about whether this guy is the demon and the sel sexual predator that he's been accused of by Mr. Busby, as you go make up your mind, look at all these factors, the very things that she's talking about, the full tapestry of that man's life. Because in all due respect, what we witness here is a new model for extortion. That's all. You bleed it out, you keep saying it, you keep saying it, and you keep talking about it. You say it's not about money when the whole thing happened. One of the things I haven't seen you all talk about much that might be worth noting, both of the, one of the women that testified at the press conference on Wednesday, or was there and spoke, the issue was, she said, this is not about money. But the fact is, if Sean's people you've since seen in writing, if they had been willing to pay her $100,000, she had never said a, she would never have said a word. Now, I don't know how she was willing to go forward, and she has every right to do that if she thinks she has a right for the suit. But if you're somebody like Deshaun, well, wait a minute. She wanted me to pay $100,000, and she would never say anything about it. And only when we said we wouldn't pay are these allegations made. Is it unheard of for a demand to be made in civil litigation? No, it's not unheard of. Is it wrong for somebody to make a demand? No. But those are all relevant facts in deciding the credibility of the facts. And what Deshaun would want is, isn't the way I've led my life before these allegations at least relevant in deciding whether I did what I'm being accused of now. And we think it is. He would want you to have, as an act of faith, he didn't do it until somebody proves he did. Uh, Mr. Hardin, uh, two questions. The first one, you've mentioned 150 massages a year. Right now we know 40 women that have come forward, 22 accusing him of sexual assault, 18 who are defending his actions or the process. The question the public has right now is why? Why seek so many massage therapists? Yeah, think about it. The numbers, I started out. Think about it. Just figure out how many massages, two to three a week. And that's been his schedule for about four years. These are all on this. And those 18 were not just for the year 2020. Um, these allegations, I think that, as I said, I think all 22 have to do with 2020. You have to remember, the landscape and the availability of all of these things changed for 2020, the middle of March of 20 till now. Um, and sure, it's a lot. And the reason is because he got a lot of massages. But during COVID, why go through so many different people exposing himself to that? And well, that's, that's a very valid question because the answer is they're just not, there's, there's not some group sitting out there waiting to give massages. And the NFL doesn't have them. The teams don't have them. I think one of the biggest misunderstandings is, I think if you check with most players, some players I read say, well, I usually pick the same person uh, and try to use that person as possible. All of that changed last year. There, you didn't have a group of people over in your room ready to get. And let's just talk about, I don't really want to belabor this too much, but let's look at his schedule. He's a quarterback. He's a pro quarterback. His schedule is longer than everybody else's, and it's more unpredictable. He may not know until 11 o'clock at night what time he's got available tomorrow. Some of these 18 women, and by the way, we just quit at 18 because I was determined not to try to do 23 and 22 or any of that silliness. We, these are women who were willing to put their name to it. 
unlike the women who sued us. That's a relevant factor for people to consider. At any rate, he, he would want to say is he'd call up one of these spas and he'd say that had like five, six, seven masseuses. I need a massage at three. Do you have somebody available? And that would do it. And the next time it might be somebody else. But you do two to three a week. And he, unlike a lot of athletes that think we'll find, he did that more consistently even in the off season than most. Some of them dropped down in the off season. Uh, Deshaun didn't. Deshaun, as Letitia talked about, the woman he was talking about is, is a woman who wrote me and that I called and told me the things Letitia was talking about. She talked about he earns his money in his balance and his ability and his strength and his ability to escape. She'd been watching him since he was junior high do that. Those kind of things were what he wanted worked on as massages, and he got a bunch of them, no question. And then one follow-up, uh, Ms. Quinones, Quinones said that uh, he never coerced women to do anything, but according to Busby's screenshots and messages, he asked women to wear specific things. If he's getting massages, why does it matter what a massage therapist is wearing? Oh, I, I, you're, you're off on other stuff. I could start doing all of that with the facts, et cetera. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really not going to get into what uh, Tony has said because that's a, a long, long trip down the line. We'll be glad to answer all of those questions. There'll be depositions. There'll be everything else. And I think uh, it, it, at the end of the day, I want to look for something that's wrong, not something that somebody is saying in a personal injury lawsuit. Yes. So is there still nine cases that still need to be approved, I guess, or granted? Yeah, but actually, thank you for bringing that up. Go ahead. I don't mean to cut you off. Go yeah, ahead. so my question for that was, you know, how many are still waiting for this emergency motion? And then yeah. in addition to that, when will you hear about these names? And then can you just touch on the consolidation agreement that you guys um, Pardon me? Today? The, consol the consolidation agreement that you guys agreed on Yeah, today. real quickly. So what she's talking about is, so what's left? That haven't that this hasn't the motion hasn't been granted and what was the agreement? The agreement that that uh, Mr. Busby and I reached is all of the cases we think and we think that judges are going to order all of them there, but that's still up to the judges to their order. All of them will go to this particular judge this morning at 11, Judge Collier, for all pretrial matters. When a case gets ready to be tried and gets to that stage then that case will go to the judge whose court it was originally filed in. So all of the discovery and depositions and all of that things will probably be combined before Judge Collier for all 22 cases, probably, but the individual judges are going to make the decision. So right now, only 13 cases have been spoken for. However, uh, Mr. Busby's indicated and asked uh, before we came over, if we agree to amend the one that's scheduled for a hearing this afternoon at 4, will y'all take that down? And we have. So the 4 o'clock one is off, so now we're at 14. So we really, you know, we're at, eight, we're at 8 cases left. And my guess is that the same ruling will ultimately be decided. But those judges all still have the right to make their individual ruling. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Deshaun has maintained innocent from, innocence from the get-go. So why, what's his take on why this is happening? You know, why does he think that these women started all of this? You know, he says he's innocent. You know, first of all, he doesn't have a take. I mean, he just, he's dumbfounded. He is truly dumbfounded. Um, if y'all remember, the landscape of these cases and the public attitude really kind of changed when the third lawsuit was filed. And that was because, I'm, my phone's going off, is what I'm messing around with here. Um, hold on. I used to have a judge that would not let anybody leave the courtroom until they surrendered their, their phone and confessed. Uh, so uh, confession is not always good for the soul. Um, I think that uh, for him, think about this. Watching this whole thing, the number of courts, the number of lawsuits, the constant pressure, it's like raising watching sausage making to an incredibly different level. I mean, if you're the average citizen that's never been caught up in anything, like, this is insane. I mean, and that's really his reaction. When I told him of that first allegation in the third lawsuit that somehow he used force in something, I didn't know him at the time. When I told him, he was in disbelief. He asked me two or three times, I, I forced her? He go, and then he, he just started crying. That's his reaction. And that's the thing for y'all to remember. We don't cry about things that we did. 
Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hardin, you have discussed some of the details in the allegations. Um, another one that was consistently brought up was that uh, Mr. Watson was nude. Do you have any response to these I'm accusations sorry. that he was Do nude you, and they were yeah, making, that's, them, that's, making them me, uncomfortable? I'm apologizing. Would you say both your lead in again and, and then the question? Because yes, I wasn't sir. sure I heard all of it. Of course. So you went through some of the, um, you addressed some of the specific allegations in these suits. Um, one of those that was consistent was the allegations that uh, Mr. Watson was nude and that wasn't something that the uh, masseuse had agreed upon or was comfortable with. Um, do you have any response to, to those allegations? Well, I, I've since learned through this um, that uh, nudity is not rare in these massages. So I, I wasn't aware that anybody agreed one way or the other to that at the beginning. So I, I would have to see what the individual woman did and see how she responds when questioned about it. Um, I'd be a little surprised if uh, masseuses really were su shocked or surprised or uncomfortable with the man wanting to be nude. I think you'll find, and, and many of these women talked about it, the 18 that were willing to put their name to it. It's not unusual that a lot of these guys uh, would prefer that, and all that happens is the therapist says, no, I'm going to put a sheet over you, and that's it. And that's what their experience was. So I, I don't understand that allegation, and uh, I think that's something that will be dealt with in individual cases. And further, again, some of the lawsuits said that he refused. Have you all addressed that? Have you addressed that with your no. client? No. It, we, it, look, it, first of all, we don't know who that is. That's been part of the problem for him to recall. Uh, but we'll, that'll get taken care of in the next week or two. Well, both, I think, Ms. Elise and uh, Lauren Baxley had said that he was nude and that they were not comfortable with that. Well, Have you been able to I mean, the, address look, here's the, the thing. I, I'm trying very, very hard not to condemn or fuss about any of the individuals. I will say to you, if that is the case, why does one go forward? But I don't know what the true facts were. I haven't met them. I've seen them. And one in the press conference and I gather in the letter. Are you saying the second lady said that too in the letter? Because there are only two people right, I know. Right, Lauren Baxley and uh, Ms. Ashley Solis, yeah. yes, sir. Look, I, I'm not going to get into the individual individual matters, but I uh, I would ask people to look and see if that makes sense. Yes, ma'am. First quick thing, do you guys intend to fight these in trial, all 22 cases? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, I, absolutely. And then second thing, so one thing that we've learned just as um, – a nation over the last three years really or since 2017 I think is that some good guys are capable of really terrible things and so I just wanted to bring that to you and see what your answer to well, that would be and uh, maybe you could kind of elaborate on some of the challenges that y'all might uh, be kind of up against. In now that let me realm. see if I understand. Is the question that you've learned over time that guys are capable of doing horrible things? I'm, I'm bringing forward the... I'm, I'm, the I'm not arguing with it. I mean I'm yeah. about to say amen. I, no, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I was trying to make sure, is that your question? What I wanted to, I wanted to have you guys, or I wanted to challenge you guys with the, I guess, um, the defense or whatever that some sexual assault survivors would say is that some good men are, good men are capable of doing terrible things. And, and, and I, th I think that's absolutely right. I don't disagree with that. And look, I, I don't take a back seat to, to my admiration and, and support of sexual survivors, sexual assault survivors for one minute. I deeply believe that is an issue and a situation and that a hugely high percentage of accusations may ultimately turn out to be true. But equally, we shouldn't be making that decision based on one side's accusation. What we're saying here is, is, is that and if I have a disagreement with people with a particular point of view here is, I hope we never reach a stage that because a particular crime is so, has such horrible consequences for the woman when it happens and so, that because the potential for damage is so great that we automatically believe the allegation just because it's been made. 
And all I am asking here is that we give this man the same benefit that the woman should get. The woman should get the benefit of the belief she may be telling the truth. The man should get the benefit also of being not guilty of it until we have some proof. And we're throwing the baby out of the bath and the bathwater out at the same time in a lot of cases. But are there men that do horrible things? Absolutely. Uh, sometimes women do too. And I just would like everybody to reserve judgment until they have evidence. I, I, I don't keep you much longer. Do you sure. have just Mr. a couple Arden, more one questions? One quick question. Um, are, are you okay with, uh, when in all of the cases, if, if the women do decide to reveal their identities, to make sure that that is just given between the, the two camps but not made public to, like you mentioned, um, prevent the women, if they are identified, from getting, like we saw today, Mr. Busby say that Ashley Solis has gotten uh, rape threats. Are you willing to make sure that those names aren't public but just revealed to, to you, to, to your team and no. to your client? No. I believe it is important in the open courts, and we've said it this morning, the open courts provision and the, statute, and the law in Texas says we are entitled to know who the accuser is and is the public. The open courts provision is the public is entitled to know. And I would hope that the only way these accusations or these allegations can be looked at as thoroughly as y'all have looked at us is for you to know who the accuser is, just like us. I think that when somebody makes this kind of accusation, it is only appropriate for people to look into the accused accuser as well as the accused. Because how, how else do you know? All right. Anybody else? Hey, hey, thank you all a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time.